Alright, so for, for the necessities for a ball python, uh, they're very simple. A ball python is a very um, easy reptile to keep. Uh, one of the easiest in the hobby, um, and I'll show you why. Now, to start off with your tank, you're not going to need something huge. You don't need to have a huge tank just because it's a, it says it's a python. Doesn't mean they're going to want to go up in trees and like other normal, what other most ball pythons would do. Ball pythons like compact spaces where they can hide. Um, as you can see up here, they got you got uh, the ball python out and roaming. They do that uh, a little bit during the um, night when they're hungry. But most of the time after you feed them, they're just going to go hide in a little area and digest their food. And so you don't need all that room since they're not going to really use it. And it actually can stress them out having a huge tank. Uh, re they, most people recommend a 40 gallon. I use 20s because I I don't think they need that much room for 40. You can keep them in 20 just fine. Um, 10 gallon will be fine when they're babies. The, the, this, the main thing you want to worry about is hiding spaces. Now what I've got going here is two plants and a hide. I would say that's not really enough, but at the time I can't get um, any more. I'm, I'm planning on getting more hides, but right now this is just fine for, for a little bit. But for a permanent solution, I would go with a lot more hiding spaces and places where they can feel comfortable or else they'll get stressed and you'll run into all sorts of problems. Now for the hide, you do, you really only need one um, because they usually only go into one, but you can have two if you want, and they're going to be in there for most of the time. So um, you might want to select something you can, if you want to see your ball python a lot, you might want to pick something that you can see them in. Um, this is uh, actually a normal little hide I got at the pet store, and I like this one because my python is uh, almost an adult and he fits just fine in there. So you can tell that um, they don't, they're not huge. They look huge when they're stretched out, but they, uh, when they're all curled up into a ball, they're, they're pretty small. Um, substrate, you can go with a few things. Um, you want to stay away from um, barks from trees. Um, this is bark that is safe. I believe it's repti bark. I'm not sure what tree it comes from, but I know it's one of the safer ones. And there's a bark that you want to watch out for, so you might do some research and find out what that bark is, and just find out what to stay away from, and you'll be good to go. Uh, you can use, I think it's aspen bedding is what most people use. I don't like the look. I like repti bark because it gives you a nice look um, for visuals, and I, that's what I like about repti bark. Um, I used to use coconut husk. That works all well too. That's, that's another safe thing to use. There are a few out there, just do some research and find out what you have at your pet store near you and find out if it's safe or not. And that's basically what you do for a substrate. Now for keeping them um, for their environment like humidity and temperatures, what you're going to want for humidity is 30 to 50%, um, which is not too high. Right here it's kind of dry. Your water bowl will keep the humidity up a little bit, but you're still going to need to mist it uh, about once a day. And that would be fine. And when they're getting ready to shed, you're going to want to mist uh, a little bit more during that period because they need the humidity to help get that shed off nice and clear. You'll know if your humidity is not high enough by uh, either getting a humidif the humid gauge. I can't even remember what that's called. But th there's uh, gauges you can get to measure the humidity and you stick them on the wall or, whatever, or whatnot. Um, you can also tell if their shed isn't coming off in one big piece. If it's kind of all PC and dry, you can you can tell from that also. Now for temperature, this is uh, the important part. For the daytime cool side, um, you're going to want 80 to 85 for the cool side. Now, main thing with tanks is that you're going to want to have two sides so that he can, or what the ball python can regulate its temperature. This right here is my hot side, and that's usually the side you want your... Um, hide on they stay in there and keep warm and over here is the cool side so when they get um, hotter or cooler they'll just switch sides and get their temperature right 
Um, for the warm side, you're going to want 90. Your your golden spot's going to be 90. Um, you're going to achieve this by using a heat pad. And heat pad looks like um, like that. That's a zoom ed heat pad. And it's just a little pad that sticks on the bottom and it will heat that side up. Um, don't I wouldn't use lights because uh, they get their heat mostly from the uh, the substrate when it gets hot. So yeah, stick to heat pads and you should be fine. Now for the night, you can keep it around 70 to 80. So if you can't keep the heat pad on for electricity reasons, then uh, just use uh, the it's cute. you can keep it down to 70 80. I apologize for the hammer banging in the background we're redoing some floors but um, I think that pretty much covers the necessities for keeping a ball python uh, just keep a water dish in there and like most like all reptiles keep a water dish in there and you should be good they're very hardy and they live for around 30 years so be prepared if you're thinking about getting a ball python and be prepared they do live quite a while